Andrew Jones, why don't I go to you for the first question? Okay. Hey, Coach, you guys have uh, three games in four days out there. Aside from winning, what is something that you really want to see from your team this weekend? I want to, I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that, what specifically, in a bat from a basketball sense, do you really want to see from these guys? Well, I, I would like, I'd like for us to continue to improve. I, I said after the uh, James Madison game that I, you know, that I told the team and I told the, the uh, rest of the coaching staff that I felt like we um, took a step forward um, in our defense, in our rebounding, in our uh, distributing, passing, sharing the basketball, shot selection. And so in all of those areas, I'd, I'd I, I want us to continue to improve and 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 get better, and it's it's a great opportunity to be able to do that with uh, so many unbelievable programs and teams out here in this tournament. Thank you, uh, Ross Martin. Go ahead. Yeah, a road trip like this outside of basketball. I mean, what kind of things do you think can can help your team here? Obviously, you're going to spend a lot of time together. The bonding aspect is that something you're, you're really looking forward to with the players being able to get to know each other better, chemistry wise, everything. Well, yeah, I mean, I just, it's always nice to, um, um, you know, when you're on the road, you have an opportunity to kind of turn down that noise from the phone, the family and the friends, because you're always all together. And so that's really nice for us to, for this year's team to be on the road for the first time together and to be able to um, just spend that uninterrupted, unhurried time on the court and off the court together that I think is just so huge for team building and team confidence and um, helping us become the team that we can become. Uh, Michael Coe from Chapelboro, go ahead. Morning, Coach. You said uh, that last season, the Virginia Tech game and the ACC tournament and the Kansas game were the two games where you, you felt that the team was really <laughs> tired. And you have a similar schedule uh, sort of to an ACC tournament or an NCAA tournament this week in the Phil Knight tournament. Do you feel like this team is more equipped to fight that off, fight off that tired factor, I guess? Well, I I, I, I do because we have, you know, tremendous depth and it, it's really going to be important. You know, it's just not sustainable to play the, you know, the starting five huge minutes. Um, you know, we, we need Dontrez, we need DeMarco, we need Tyler, we need Seth, we need Justin. Um, you know, we we need those guys and uh, it's only been early in the season, but every time that those guys have been on the floor, they've deliter, delivered in, in some form or fashion <clears throat> on either or both ends of the floor and they're going to be used a lot uh, this week and it's going to be fun to see them out there competing. Thanks, Coach. C.L. Brown from the News and Observer. Hey, Hubert, I was curious, what what similarities do you see between um, Puff and Cameron uh, Johnson from uh, not from a skills perspective, but from a uh, they've both kind of had to deal with their different nagging injuries and just, you know, yeah. the process of getting back on the floor? Yeah, see, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, like one of the things that I, I really try to do is not. um you know, I've said for me, I've never been a comparison person, and I try not to do that with with other teams or other players. I haven't really looked at Puff and and kind of measured him on and off the court against his brother Cam, but they're 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 two different players, they're two different people. They're both unbelievable to coach, to be around, to be a part of this program. I know that Cam and Puff at times have dealt with injuries, but other than that, I don't think there's any similarities at all. I think they, on the basketball court, they have different skill sets and what they bring to the table is, is, is so beneficial to, to our team. And um, I'm just really happy for Puff. I'm, I, it was great to have him on the floor against James Madison. Um, you could see the crowd. They were really excited when he stepped on the floor. And in the second half, he made, you know, two or three unbelievable plays, hit that three, then the and one, then he took the charge. And it just in a short time in that 12 minutes that he was out there on the floor just showed how important he is uh, to the success of this team. 
And uh, I look forward for him playing even more minutes uh, this week. Andrew Jones from Tar Hill Illustrated. If I could ask a two-part question about Caleb, he's five for 27 from three through the first four games. And I was talking to him after the game uh, Sunday and he said he's frustrated. Is it, is it er too early for you to have a conversation with a guy who's kind of frustrated over a shot or do you just sort of let it play itself out, figuring that it will? Well, you know, one of the things that I always, you know, for me, you know, when I struggle with my shot, I, you know, I kind of went through like, like a checklist of one I wanted to look at, you know, was there any thing technique or fun, you know, in terms of my fundamentals, was, was there anything that I needed to address or was anything wrong for Caleb? It's not, um, you know, I always looked at, you know, you know, the type of quality shots that I'm taking, you know, I just always felt like if I was, wasn't taking good shots, it didn't matter how well, you know, how good I was as a shooter. I wanted to take, take good shots. And I think Caleb has, done such a better job this year compared to last year in terms of um, um, taking better and quality shots and then also focusing on other things. You know, I, you know, you talk about Caleb and that doesn't bother me at all. He's one of the best shooters in the country. I, he has the same type of mentality as myself. If, my, if I miss 10, the next 10 are going in. And then the great thing that I, that I love about Caleb is he's not a shooter. He's a basketball player. The defense that he played against James Madison was unbelievable. His uh, distributing and playmaking against James Madison was unbelievable. His his uh, team leadership in the huddle and in the locker room has been unbelievable. And so that's why Caleb is one of the best basketball players in the country and why he's going to be in the NBA. And it's because he's a basketball player. And even though he's struggling for maybe percentage wise from three point range for the first four games. He's going to have a terrific year in so many different areas, as well as shooting the ball from three-point range. Matt, if I could ask the other part of the question. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that he said that he that one of the things he talked to you a lot about is emphasizing going downhill, being aggressive, getting in the lane, getting shots off. How much has his game improved from the ability of getting the shot off when he takes contact when he gets in the lane? Well, I think that's great. You know, one of the things that we talked to Caleb about is attacking the basket, you know, because one, he has that ability. And number two is, I, you know, I just, when he gets fouled, he goes to the free throw line. I know his percentages from the free throw line are a little bit down, but he's, you know, historically one of the best free throw shooters in Carolina history. So like, we love his, when he gets to the basket, we love his ability to finish. We love his ability to pass and we love his ability to get fouled and get to the free throw line. So it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's good news for us when, when, when Caleb is attacking a basket and that's something that we've talked about and he's doing a terrific job of that this season. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Absolutely. Um, Shelby Swanson, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Shelby Swanson, Daily Tar Heel, a bit of a different question, but we are writing an article right now about Charlie Scott and Kathy Crawford. Uh, two of the players that were integral in the integration of the men's and women's basketball teams at UNC and were recipients of the ACC Unite Awards this year. Just wanted to ask, um, as someone who's been around this basketball program for so long, can you talk about the impact and the legacy of both of these players? Well, I mean, it's um, the impact of, of both of these players um, have been, you know, unbelievable. You know, when I think about, you know, Charlie Scott, I automatically – Think about two things. One, my father, who was one of the first uh, group of students to integrate uh, public schools right outside of uh, the Charlotte area in Pineville, North Carolina, in the Mecklenburg County. And then also think about myself, you know, just um, being the first African American head coach uh, for the men's basketball program here at the University of North Carolina. And so, um, um, think about giving people an opportunity and a chance. And when you give people an opportunity and a chance, uh, it's unbelievable what can happen when given that opportunity. And in all three of those situations, those are the things that I think about. Richard Atkins, go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Coach. I just got a quick two questions for you. Uh, Richard Atkins from Tar Heel Wire. Uh, the first question is, you have a lot of pressure going into the season, number one ranked team. Do you feel like that pressure is fair um, for the players? And how have the players responded to that pressure? 
And then just a quick second question, a fun one for you. Of course, you all plan on Thanksgiving Day. Are y'all planning on any Thanksgiving traditions to do while you're out in Portland? Well, uh, the first thing is that um, we don't, I don't uh, feel any pressure and I don't think the guys feel any pressure at all. I, I, you know, one of the things that I've talked to them about is understanding um, what is noise and what is real and explaining to them that the noise from last year was coming from the direction of criticism. And then this year so far, it's come from the direction of praise and that both are noise and both are not beneficial to you in, in terms of being the best individually and the best as a team and to focus on what is real is and, and that's our preparation, our practice and our play. And so we've had many discussions about that. I'm, I'm thankful that our guys are, are, um, are learning how to focus and how um, to focus on what is beneficial and what is real um, in this situation from the direction of praise. I think it's a great learning experience for all of them because they're gonna be unbelievably successful for the rest of their life. Um, the other question is, yes, we are going to have Thanksgiving meal tomorrow after the game, and we've invited um, all of their parents that are traveling out here, and um, Thanksgiving's always been a really awesome holiday for us because it brings you into a place of thankfulness, and I think um, that's something that we don't do enough is to step back and think about how many ways um, um, that we've been protected and provided and um, how thankful we are for, for the families that we have, the relationships with the, that we have and the resources and the things that we're able to enjoy. Thank you, coach. Ross Martin, Inside Carolina. Hey coach, yeah, a little fault from the <clears throat> AJ's first question. Is there anything you wanna like kind of learn or, or take away from, from these games in Portland? Like, what are you looking for in particular? you would like to see or, or like to learn about this team, the squad right now? No, I, it's, I, I don't know if it's, you know, I'm coming out on this trip and I want to have a checklist of what I want to learn. I, you know, I, again, I, I want us to continue to improve and that's something that I'm looking at. You know, I, I, a week and a half ago was the first time that we had all 18 guys practicing at the same time. And so, figuring out roles and rotations. That's, that's something that's ongoing right now. And so um, that could be something that I'm looking, um, looking at, but um, in terms of this team, you know, I, I've told you this before that, you know, we hang our hat and our success lies on getting after it on the defensive end and rebounding the basketball and, and limiting turnovers. And I, that's why I felt like against James Madison, we took a step forward. So I'd like in this next week, week and a half, feel like that we're taking steps forward um, in all three of those areas. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Coach. C.L. Brown, go ahead. Hey, I just wanted to uh, follow with another Puff-related question. I was curious, you know, you, you mentioned him coming into uh, to the game on Saturday, in the, I mean, uh, Sunday in the crowd's reaction. Were you ever a fan favorite, whether at Carolina or at any of your stops in the in the pros? Did you ever kind of feel that way? I, you know what? I don't know. Um, I see a lot. I know this sounds weird, but I just I was. That was something that just never really concerned me. I just never really noticed it, thought about it, um, um, focused on it. Um, you know, my job was to be the best that I could be. And I wanted, every time that I stepped on the floor, I wanted to play as hard as I could and um, for myself and for my team. And so I hope when I stepped on the floor, people were excited that I was stepping on the floor. <laughs> but I'm sure, at, at, I'm sure at times they were like, please don't put me in. So um, either way, um, that's something that I just never had thought about or, or concerned myself with. All right. Thanks coach. All right. Coach has time for one more before he has to go. Um, Shelby, go ahead. All right. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, you're talking after the JMU game about how you guys had three very spirited practices kind of splitting up the guys stars and non-stars evenly. Um, and you said that it was super competitive and put you guys in a good position to play very well against JMU. 
just want to ask, how would you evaluate the practices that you've had leading into this slate of games this week? Well, I think our practices, you know, um, you know, have been really good. I mean, you know, since the James Madison game, we've only had one practice. And so we'll have uh, two separate practices a day because we'll practice at the, at the, at the site that we're playing at tomorrow and also an additional site. And so in our preparation for Portland and, I think our practices would are, are going to be terrific today. You know, it's interesting. Um, I put a lot into practice and I don't put a lot into practice. In all the years that I've been playing or coaching, you know, there have been times where the practices have been absolutely horrible and we have played great. And then there have been times like, man, we're practicing so well. And then we go out in a game and we're not playing very well at all. And so uh, I like to have good practices and I like to have good games. And my hope is, is that uh, we can have another good practice today and that we can play our best tomorrow against a really great uh, Portland team. Thank you, Coach Davis. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, have a good holiday.